Hello and welcome to Get to Know Science. In the last video we looked at what the rate of reaction is and how to measure and calculate it. In this video we'll look at the factors that affect the rate of reaction and why they affect it. Here are five factors that affect the rate of reaction. There's the concentration of reactants in solution, there's the pressure of reacting gases, the surface area of solid reactants. Now these three account for the three states of matter so we have liquids, gases and solids and then we have temperature and lastly we have the presence of catalysts. But before we look at these we first need to understand how they affect the rate of reaction and to do that we need to understand collision theory and activation energy because that explains how a reaction happens in the first place. A chemical reaction can only happen when reacting particles collide with each other. So if these are the two reactants, these two particles are the reacting particles, they need to collide in order to react with each other. The thing is, not every collision leads to a reaction. These particles, when they collide, need to have enough energy to cause a reaction. So they not only need to collide with each other, they need to have sufficient energy. And the minimum amount of energy that particles need to react is called the activation energy. So there are two ways that we can increase the rate of reaction. We can either increase the frequency of collisions, so more collisions, or we can increase the energy of the reacting particles. If we do either of these two things, or both, we can then increase the rate of reaction. So first let's look at concentration and pressure. Increasing the concentration and increasing the pressure both lead to an increase in the frequency of collisions because the particles are more crowded together. So let's take this as a container with some particles in it the red particles and the green particles, which need to react with each other. If we increase the concentration so that it's more like this, then the particles are more likely to collide with each other and therefore react. And that's because they're just more crowded together. There are more particles in a given space. Alternatively, if we increase the pressure so that it looks like this, and here I've increased the pressure by making the container smaller. You can see that they are, again, more crowded together. So the frequency of collisions will increase. They are more likely to collide and therefore the rate of reaction will increase. Increasing the surface area of a solid increases the frequency of collisions as well. And that's because there will be more surface area exposed. So let's take the example of this cube of material. If I split this cube in half, I have increased the surface area because now there is this whole surface which is now exposed and it's the same on this side of the other half. So splitting this cube in half hasn't changed the overall volume. The volume is still the same. I haven't added any material and I haven't taken away any material, but I have increased the surface area by cutting this cube in half because I have been able to expose more of the surface of this material. And the more exposed surface area you have, the more likely a collision can happen because now there are more places for a collision to happen. There's a whole other surface here where things can collide with it. So by cutting it in half I have increased its surface area to volume ratio and that will increase the rate of reaction due to a higher frequency of collisions. So let's sum up where we are so far. We have covered the first three, the concentration of reactants in solution, the pressure of reacting gases and the surface area of solid reactants. Increasing any of these will lead to a higher frequency, so an increased frequency of collisions. 
If we look at temperature, increasing the temperature does two things. One, it increases the frequency of collisions and secondly it increases the energy of the particles so remember if we think back to collision theory you can increase the rate of reaction by increasing the number of collisions or by increasing the energy of the reacting particles and increasing the temperature does both so we know already that if you increase the temperature of a substance the particles will gain kinetic energy and they'll move around faster so therefore they are not only moving with more energy but they are also more likely to collide so last but not least let's have a look at catalysts we can sometimes use a catalyst to speed up a reaction a catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of reaction without being affected chemically itself or without being used up itself during the reaction. Catalysts work by lowering the activation energy of a reaction. So let's look at this graph. The graph shows the activation energy of a reaction. We have the reactants to start off with and at the end we have the products and this blue curve shows how much activation energy the reaction needs in order to take place so this blue arrow here shows us the activation energy for this reaction now we look at the pink curve and this shows the activation energy when a catalyst is present so basically a catalyst will reduce the activation energy that is necessary for a reaction to take place so to sum up, a catalyst reduces the activation energy. It reduces the activation energy necessary for a reaction to take place. So as long as we understand collision theory and what activation energy is, we can explain how each of these five factors actually affect the rate of reaction. The first three increase the frequency of collisions. Temperature affects both. It increases the frequency of collisions and it also increases the particle's energy. And catalysts reduce the activation energy needed so that more collisions will result in a reaction. Okay, so that was the factors affecting the rates of reaction. We also went over collision theory and what activation energy is. I hope you found this video useful. Make sure you like, comment, share and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.